Alright folks, what's good? We are back, another episode, Ain't No Seats. I cannot believe we are doing an episode, a podcast, four years in the making, two nights after the Kansas Basketball Jayhawks cut down the net, win their fourth or sixth to some people, <laughs> national title. Uh, Bill Self gets his second, the, the, the second title we've been talking about for years about, man, if Bill can just get that second title, his legacy, it's in such better shape. Um, and he got it. And I, I can't believe this is the team that did it. We'll talk more about that. Um, just an incredible run, incredible Final Four, incredible classic championship game. B-turn, we'll, we'll get to the outrageous night you had with <laughs> – I've never, whatever, Everyone. we'll get to it. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to talk about it yet, but B turn, just, just tell me how incredible does it feel to wake up a national champ? Like what, um, what a, what a month. Yeah, I know. What an amazing run. Like Remy Martin really saved our, oh, we've talked about it a lot. He saved us against Creighton and Providence. Um, Creighton in the first half, we were terrible and he made so many big shots, but um, it's just crazy. Like a couple guys, our fan base was um, tough on all year, like how much they stepped up, especially in this game. Like you hear Bill and the players talk about Dewan kind of starting to come back in the second half with the lob to Dave and the steal that led to the Jalen and one. And then, I mean, Dave was the only one that scored for us late. Like Dave was so good in new Orleans. I think he averaged 18 and 10 and what, a, like there's no better way to win a national title than what we did on Monday night. You're down 16 at one point. It's the biggest comeback in title game history against a blue blood. And, I don't know, like at halftime, um, I felt terrible. They're down 15. We couldn't make a shot. We didn't score for about six minutes. And Caleb Love really wasn't doing much. And I just, I didn't think there was a chance. And the fact that they got that thing to one um, with yeah. just over 12 minutes to go was insane to me. Like they just came out so hot. CB was electric for a span. And I don't know, it just feels amazing for Bill Self to get a second, um, his second ring. And I could not be yeah. happier for the guy. I mean, it was the first half. We started out fine, and at at, a, at one point, it felt like we could potentially, like I, for a few seconds, maybe even a full minute, I was kind of like, "Wow, this is going how we predicted." Let down game for UNC. We're hungry. We're the team that's here on a mission. Like we jump out to the big lead, seven zero, and felt like things were gonna roll. Then from there, it was it was really a nightmare. Um, AB at halftime. You know, me, I went up to the kitchen. It was just a dark, there was dark energy in the house. Nobody was feeling good. Nobody was excited. There wasn't a lot of hope, but we all kind of went our separate ways. You went to my back patio. Me and Alan went up to the kitchen. We kind of sat there in silence. And uh, I popped out to the patio and I was just like, man, that sucked. But let's get it under eight by the under eight. And that became <laughs> like our new mantra. It was like under eight by the under eight. Let's do it. Brother, we had a six point lead with I don't know how much time. I mean, so before we get into all that, like, AB, yeah, talk to me about what you were thinking as you sat on my back patio in the backyard in the in the dark um, at halftime of this game. I was just so sad. I was watching old Murph Dog, your puppy, run around outside and just scrolling through Twitter, looking at all these reactions, seeing all the Bill self hate, the hot takes from KU fans about how this team's the worst team ever. That, about how the team's supposed to be good. We had K-State Mizzou fans talking shit in my mentions. Um, it was just a lot going through my mind. And I think your basement, by the this is just in the environment that we were in, how tense it was. I think your basement temperature was set to about 58 degrees. Mm -hmm. I just needed some air. It felt like it was 1,000 degrees downstairs. I was, like, panicking, just needed to get outside, have a moment to myself, <laughs> didn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> I was just so like worked degrees? up. I don't know. I, all the girls were saying it was freezing cold down there, and I kept looking around. I'm like it's a thousand at least, and maybe oh, it's because okay. we're so jumping just, around. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. But I just, I don't know. There were so many like negative emotions going through my head, and just texting people. And then you came out, and we didn't even talk at first. Like you were just getting your dog, and we just made a little eye contact. And I went back to my phone, and you're you like went back inside and then poked your head back out, and you're like. Get it to the eight, get it to under eight at the under eight. We'll be fine. And it was at, I think it was 
at seven with a free throw coming up, going to the under 16. It was, it's just like <laughs> like that. It just switched so quickly. And dude, from then on, dude. I think we all got a workout in just from jumping up and down, running around your basement, going nuts. Exhausting. I felt like I put in 40 minutes. <clears throat> like I was gassed. I felt like I guarded freaking <laughs> – Armando Baycott for 40 minutes and uh yeah I mean we it couldn't have gone better the way that team just struck right out the gates with a great lob to Dave you could just sense the energy Dewan's immediately just picking them up full court uh and you could kind of tell like even pretty early on and UNC came back and made a couple shots to kind of weather the storm but you could still just see that our guys were locked in and then we had I tweeted it out, and you guys can tell me if I'm an idiot and a prisoner prisoner of the moment. But like the sequence where Remy makes the three in the corner, and then Dewan steals the ball, and then Jalen gets the ball and one place goes absolutely bananas. B turn, you were sitting in the middle of it. Was that the most nuts you think outside of maybe the final buzzer? Was that the most nuts the crowd went all night? Yeah, I think so for sure. I mean. Yeah, I think it was 50-50 around the 10-minute mark. Remy hits the three from the corner and then the and one. And you, I think it went to a timeout, and then Jalen came out, hit the free throw, gets even louder. And at that point, I know you and C is super hot, but at that point I kind of felt like, damn, we might just pull away. And Because you talked about it a little bit ago, like the Duke game. We talked about it going into this game. Like we thought letdown spot UNC would be a little gassed, exhausted. So at that point I felt really good. And there was just so much momentum leading up to it. Like you're down 15 at half, and – you get it to – you go up six halfway through the half. Like, so you're you're outscoring them by 21 in the second half at that point. So it's like, yeah, yeah. the I mean, the Superdome was freaking juiced, and Jalen finishes that. Um, he'd missed 100 layups in the first half. He even talked about it after the game. But to see him finish it, and yeah, like CB up to that uh, point too was amazing. He was relentless finishing around the rim. Um, he, he willed us back really at one point. Yeah. And the Superdome was awesome. It was, it was like I I I said this, and again I'm I'm making some bold claims, but like I legit think the first half of UNC 08 and the second half of this UNC game, like those might be the two most fun halves of basketball you'll ever watch because like that 08 game was just like we got to get Roy, like we owe him one, like we have to go win this one. It was Bill's first Final Four. We just smoked them. And then this one, it was like, what can we do to get back in this game? And we just came out and did everything you had to do. We just – we flat out dominated. Um, but we're not giving near enough love. We haven't said his name enough. David McCormick, the guy – yeah, this is standing O, standing O. But the guy that – we've said it. He's gotten so much criticism. He's, I pray he hasn't read what things have said about him on Twitter. Um, fair or not, wasn't fair, but especially considering he was more injured than we all ever knew. I mean, that guy, who would have thought that man gets a game winner and then gets another bucket to put us up three um, to win a national title? Like, I can't believe it. Like, it's, I was thinking after the game kids that are younger that don't really remember this game or even like our kids one day all they're gonna think of david mccormick is a legend from the national championship team in 2022 they won't know anything else and we'll be there to be like yeah he was actually kind of hilarious at times <laughs> but yeah he a b he's going down as a legend and that's the most banana my brain is yet to fully comprehend that i don't think well like we were saying the whole time play like two more good games and that's all people are going to remember. But I mean, and by the way, I don't think you mentioned this. He got robbed like that. Yeah. Love Oshai, love him. But Dave was just better in the final four. If you're considering both yeah. games and even just the final, I know Oshai played great defense and that's not really accounted for in the box score. Had some big shots, but like, I mean, the biggest moments of the game, like the start of the comeback, the last bucket to go up three, he had a bucket to go up one with a minute and a half to go. Like he was just, the most important, the most outstanding. And it, I'm just, I'm incredibly happy for the dude to end his career like that. Assuming he doesn't use his COVID year next year, which I don't think any of us think he's going to, but um, what if he did quietly? One thing that I don't think anyone's really talked about since the game, his ability to stay out of foul trouble after he picked up his third, because Mitch was just Mitch is 
I'm, I love Mitch. He's been great for a thousand years at KU. That game was not for him. Him against Baycott, and I think we <laughs> talked. About, we match. talked about this at the beginning of the game. Like that's just not one for Mitch. And Dave mm-hmm. being able to not pick up a fourth at any point, <laughs> and even giving up some dunks, easy layups in that process, just thinking bigger picture, massive. But he also he also wasn't playing bad defense. Like no. he was being smart. But there were times where we'd be like, "No, Dave, don't foul," and he'd like get a block. Mm-hmm. Like he was playing smart. Staying avoided because it did feel like okay, we had all the momentum, we got the six point lead, we're in control a little bit. But it was like the second Dave picks up four, this game will turn badly. And mm-hmm. he really, I think he did with I don't know how much three minutes, maybe. Yeah, it wasn't much, like light. he was still just gonna play through it. Um, so yeah, just just crazy that. Dave became what he be like that image of him fist pumping going down the court, the image of him doing a little hook over manic. Like those are images that will be played on intro videos forever. <laughs> and I don't know, like, and I don't want this to sound like we're taking anything away from Oates. Like that's how I felt weird being like Dave was robbed. Cause I don't want to take away from Oates. He's a legend, mm-hmm. but David McCormick de- deserved MOP and he deserved to be in the freaking rafters. And I'm sad he won't be there unless do you think self, do something about self it. could override that? Like if he truly felt passionate about it, he, I mean, no one's going to tell him no. I know, but, but I without think, MOP, how's he going in the rafters? You know, just cause, just cause Bill wants it. Like if Bill goes to I whoever mean, is in charge, I think Bill might honestly be in charge of that in a way. But if Bill just goes there and goes like, dude, I know he doesn't technically have the hardware. He wasn't an All-American. He wasn't a Big 12 poi. But he was a national champion, and he was the – I mean, you can't say the reason we won the game, but he had the arguably the biggest moments in the game. He, like you just mentioned, that video is going to be on the intro video for our grandkids to watch when they take their first trip to Allen Fieldhouse. Like, yeah. I think – I don't know if it'll happen, but I'm just saying, like, I don't want to say it's impossible just because he technically didn't receive the – trophy or the honor or whatever it is yeah Yeah. um yeah i wanted to talk about mlp a little more um with dave yeah i think a super underrated part about that game was his defense i think armando was having a tough time even backing him down he was forcing armando to shooting 15 plus footers um jump shots he was getting awkward layups um dave was i think dave might have been the best player on the floor like it sounds crazy but in the first half he made a ton of buckets second half he like, think about that shot he did make to give us the lead. I mean, UNC's up one with about 120 to go. He misses a left-handed hook, gets the offensive rebound. Like, if UNC gets that board, there's 120 yeah. left. They're taking 30 seconds off the clock, and it just screams like a Caleb Love three, and they go up four, and that's yep. game. Like, that's yep. game. They hit a three, it's game. Dave gets the rebound, sticks with it. You knew he was not going to pass to anyone on the floor, <laughs> makes the hook to take the lead, and – UNC didn't score the rest of the way, and we win it all. The stones it takes to grab that offensive board, and we've said it, Dave's never been shy of confidence like this. But still, in that moment, you just miss a shot, and like you said, like as that ball's in the air, you can kind of tell he was missing it. And like my first thought was, oh, my God, like we're going to lose. Like for that half second, it was like, wow, we, we came all this way, and we're going to lose. And for him to just snag that board and take it right back up, just – a big time play, a dude that was not scared at all of the moment. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if Bill can do what AV said and override it, who knows they might, but it's just like frustrating that he, that thing is there. Like Dave McCormick would have never been considered for the rafters had he not had a final four like this. And that's probably why they make it. So you have to win MOP because it, they want it to be a special, special thing, but the dude was the most outstanding player. Like, there's nothing – there's there's no way around it. But whatever. I don't want to get hung up on that. Uh, what do you guys think? Bill said that Ochai had the most uh, – what did he say? I, I want to be careful with my words here. It wasn't best season since Danny Manning necessarily. It was like – Most I decorated. What? Most Danny. decorated. Yeah, what do you think of that, B-Turn? Um, I mean – what a year by him, dude. Like, so consi- – like, yeah. I don't know what you guys think, but Michigan State game, first game of the year um, in New York, like, you could just tell it was a different Oach. He was so um, conditioned, like, just running at a different speed, playing at a different level, mid-range, finishing, and, like, just as consistent as can be all year. Big 12 player of the year, 
um, Big 12 tournament. Was he Big 12 tournament MVP? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then he struggled a little bit to start the tournament and struggled to shoot it late, but Elite Eight against Miami and then Final Four against Nova. He didn't miss a shot till late in the game. And we end up winning a title. And I mean, I don't know. Like, who's had a better, more decorated year since Danny? Like, yeah. Oates was National Player of the Year candidate. He had, a, he's a consensus first team All American. Like, you can't ask for a better year. And it's like, I feel like we'll think of older players, but maybe like 10 years, 20 years down the road, we're going to look back and be like, holy shit. Like that was such a crazy year from Oach. Yeah. It, and like that whole thing about this team, I was sitting at work today thinking about this and it's like, it wasn't just Oach, but I feel like in the moment, and it was fair because at times this team certainly did not look like a national title team, but when you sit down and you look at the season this team just had on paper, you mentioned it, Michigan State, opening night of the season, they 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 blow out Michigan State. Now, Michigan State wasn't that great of a team, but in the future, you're going to look back on that and see, oh, wow, we, we we destroyed Michigan State opening night. Then you look at it, we, we hang 100 on Missouri. Um, we hang 100 on K-State. We come back from 16 down at K-State to win, and – then you look at the NCAA tournament, the Final Four, the second half against Miami, the Villanova game, the comeback against UNC. Like This team did some really legendary, awesome stuff that you can talk about forever. And A.B., me and you kind of talked about this yesterday. They weren't necessarily the best team Bills ever had very often, but they had a gear and they had moments where they could put together like 10 minutes of just a level – that might be just as good as any team Bill Self's had. Do you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, like you said, talent wise, I mean, there's no top five pick on this team. There's no, I think I read the, or was it CJ Moore that had the article where it said that this was like yeah. the least like talented recruiting ranking wise team to win a championship in the last like 25 years. Only like, two top 100 players yeah. that started, I think. Yeah. But like you said, they just, and maybe it's the chemistry because a lot of them have played together for, years and years and years at this point even pre-college but I mean they just they could turn it on when they turned it on no one looks like them uh we're not going to look back on this team as you know a woulda coulda shoulda like we have with other teams where we just look at the Wiggins and Embiid or Josh Jackson and Frank Mason and things like that it's just a team and I think the championship game proved that because midway through the game I was looking at the box score kind of during a tv timeout and I was trying to think who is going to win most most outstanding player because everyone yeah. had like there were like five or six different dudes that had twelve plus, like and I think that's just the perfect example of this team is that everyone contributed in their own different way whether it's scoring defense, whatever it may be, and, and that, when it all when it all came together, it it shined like maybe we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, the group's so they're so cocky and confident, dude. Like I felt like after the game they win Monday night. And, yeah, they were pumped and happy, but it's almost like the looks on their faces and the expressions is like they expected it. Like they just yeah. know they're better than you. And I feel like throughout the year, one of the things I worried about was just having dogs and having some killers on the team. And, I mean, they proved that they are, man. Like Remy Martin, <laughs> we got to talk about Remy in a little bit. Like some of the shots he hits, like come on. Um, yeah. Oach, CB, Dave. Jalen, Dewan, like we, this team had some dogs and some of the halves they put together, especially in the tournament is just insane. Like Providence, they held them to like 10 points in the first half. Um, and then 47 to 15 against Miami K state. And yeah. I think the biggest thing like in the end ended up being how battle tested we were and how many games we did end up winning late. And it's crazy. Yeah. They've been, they've talked about the K state game. Uh, Bill's been talking about it to the media um, and things like that. We were down 17 and I'm not trying to knock K-State or hate on them, but it's K-State. Like, yeah. compared to UNC, UNC might have been the hottest team in the world. Um, yeah. they, they put up 95 against Baylor, and you're down 16 to them. And On the biggest <clears throat> stage. Like, the that's a terrifying moment to be down 16 to North Carolina on and, the most watched game in cable history. <laughs> and at half at halftime, like you said, I bet there was like, you were thinking this. I'm sure AB was. I bet thousands of KU fans were thinking, just chip away, just chip away. They didn't just chip away at it. They got it to freaking one in seven minutes 
Like it wasn't just chipping away. They came out like CB said Dave was laughing and smiling at half. Like just go do what you do. He he said he looked at Dave and was like, "What the hell are you smiling about? You're down 15 in the national yeah. championship." Like they're just confident, and it's just a great group. Yep. And Bill even said this group could play with any Kansas team because they believe. Yep, and AB, me and you said it all year. Or all of us said it. It was like. Ah, this team's good, but man, that defense, you top 20, we're not top 20 offensive and defensive efficiency in Kim Palm. And that that's always this case. The team's always finished top 20. And then we snuck in there, right? When did we sneak in? After the Elite Eight? Yeah, I think we were like low 20s going into the Elite Eight game, and I we moved up to 16 or 17. I'm glad you teed me up for that defensive thing because I got some numbies that I want to throw out to you. And maybe the reason why. We went from like 32 to I think we finished 15th on defense. Uh, wild. Shooting percentages for the tournament game for the teams we played. Texas Southern, 33%. Creighton, 36%. Providence, 34%. Miami, 34%. Villanova, 38%. North Carolina, 31%. 31? That is clamps. Absolute um, clamps on all six of those games. And like you said, top 20, that streak keeps rolling. 21 of the last... 23, and if you want to spread it out two more rounds for defense, 22 of the last 23 are top 22 in offense or defense or offense and defensive efficiency. We knew that was the key all year, and they, they just locked in starting Big 12 tournament, really, and just let that ride the rest of the way. I'm, I'm proud of us for being, like, level-headed, too. I feel like – I'm not trying to hype us up, but we're pretty smart with um, these KU squads and Bill Self. Like we said – Eventually, Bill Self's going to get these dudes to buy in defensively because if they don't, they're not going deep. And they did. I don't know how many points Providence scored in that first half. I think it was like 18. Yeah, you said 10 earlier, but so, we'll go with – I think it was 19. Yeah, it was under – so under 20. Miami, they held them to 15 in the second half. And then I'm pretty sure UNC scored like 29 in the second half. Three halves against – really good teams that they held under 30, two of them under 20 and like huge state games. Like yep. that's insane, man. They flipped a switch defensively. They found after that Texas game, it felt like there were so many question marks when we won the big 12 and they just flipped a switch and found something in Kansas city and got so hot and turned that into yep. a national championship. Like it's um, Bill self. So amazing at getting his guys to do certain things and getting them to buy in defensively. Well, one Is of the there, games always, uh, Go No, go ahead, A.B. Well, I, I just want to throw – you had mentioned this like right before we started talking defense, but just how this team wasn't like the most talented team, whatever. But are we going to look back in a couple of years and be like, okay, this team was a one seed and then going into postseason play added an all-conference like caliber player to go along with that one seed and add it on top? Are we going to look back on this team and be like, yeah, no shit, they won a championship. They were fucking loaded. Is there any chance we can look at it that way just because the players? I mean, Ochai, oh. we talked about it before, but I just think like we were so locked into our mindset on this team from January and February, and we just kind of forgot the fact that, oh, this team went, what, 28 and six in the regular season in Big 12 tournament? And mm -hmm. third overall seed, Remy turned it on. And then, yeah, no, like, of course we yeah. went far. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I we've seen it with 08 like the le the way the legend grows you know what I mean like Mario Chalmers makes a shot and now you see Fox College Basketball or these Twitter accounts saying that Mario Chalmers is the best point guard in Kansas history we all watched Mario Chalmers play for three years the guy wasn't the best point guard in Kansas history probably not even top five but he was playing off the ball most of the time but like yeah. the point is when you win a natty the way you remember things. And that's what's so fun about winning an Addy. That's why we said things like just win two more games and Dave's issues go away. Remy's, I mean, Remy's will always live because that's kind of the legend of this team. Like you said, is the story of Remy was like, this dude wasn't going to play. You have Vernon saying he's out for the year. Uh, and next thing you know, Remy had a case for MOP just from the shots he hit in that second half. Um, if he plays good in that Villanova game, I honestly think he wins it because his, Dave made the big buckets, the big shots late, but Remy's shots were like they stuck with you. Like they were a, they were big time moments. The step back three at the end of the shot clock was crazy. So you, uh, yeah, I do think over time this team will grow as we won't be talking about. Yeah, that team wasn't that good because you yeah. don't hear people say well, that. Crazy, Maybe some. You know, but... Yeah, 
but I do wonder how this team, how we'll view this team compared to like 2017 and 2011. Because right now, I think we'd all agree if those teams play each other, 2011, 2017, probably favored, probably win more games out of 10. But this team just freaking had more heart. And like B-Turn said, they were just so cocky and so always ready to just go at anyone. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this kind of legend grows and how this yeah. team's viewed, but doesn't matter. I mean, the team won the Natty banner flies forever. Um, unless you're a K-State fan and thinks this banner is getting vacated, even though we mm-hmm. had uh, one McDonald's All-American and the rest <laughs> were just a bunch of local kids. Like, yeah, Adidas threw the bag, threw the if, bag. And a bunch look at Dewan of- Harris from Missouri <laughs> State. Like yeah. if if our fans ever act like this towards like Missouri or K State if they ever do end up winning an Addy like that's just embarrassing and I just want to like smack you or hit you in the face like how do you discredit like all you have to ask yourself is how do you discredit a national championship? It's like, like it, we'll never have to today, worry about that. So um, I but, don't want to spend too much time on this, but the tweet today where the guy said our run in 08 was easy when we <laughs> beat the number one overall seed and the number two overall seed, we literally beat the two toughest teams in the tournament. You can't do that. You can't do better than that. <laughs> we beat like, two MVPs in that run. UNC, yes. <laughs> UNC has insane. hands row and Ty Lawson, Danny Green, and Memphis has D. Just a hilariously CDR. bad tweet. Just so wrong that it made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, back to AB's question. Like, yeah, we were loaded. It just feels like there were some question marks going in the tournament. Um, like with Remy, Remy was peaking at that point, but it was like a small sample size, Big 12 tournament. Um, and then Dave, like, I bet, I don't know. I It's not like I know Dave personally, but I owe the dude an apology. Like, I was so... <laughs> so hard on the guy for his whole career basically um and he was just incredible in the tournament um miami final four but there were so many question marks like going into the tournament i'm just thinking like if we lose a tournament game twitter is just gonna bash dave like it's gonna be because of dave somehow and even we beat miami us three are talking on the pod like we're still talking about Dave. Like, can he be good for two more games? Like we just need him to be decent for two more games. And he was fucking yeah. amazing for two more games. Yeah. Like Villanova 25 and nine and then 15 and whatever he had 15 and 10 on Monday night. But so he wasn't just decent in new Orleans. He was incredible. And he was our best player in new Orleans. And he won us. And like, I went from worrying about him costing us the title to him winning us the title. It's crazy. Dude, we were literally, and I, I get that it was cause Baycock got hurt, but like, we were like in my basement being like feed Dave, feed Dave, like at the in the last possessions of the game. And I just love how the seasons come full circle. Cause do you remember the meltdown in the Dayton game when we went to Dave and the biggest it was the same wow. situation? And I'm yep. like, I'm realizing it. We were up one, we ran the same play to just get Dave on the block, and we go to him and he scores. We go up three in the Dayton game, it was the complete opposite. He commits a charge turnover they come down they win at the buzzer like that that almost gives me chills saying it like we literally it was like a the movie script thing is overdone but it was just hilarious to see bill just be like i trust my guy we're gonna force feed him all the way to the freaking natty so i want to throw this out there if i were david mccormick you're probably not getting drafted you're probably not making an nba roster you might you could come back to kansas in a year where we're probably going to lose a lot. We're probably going to lose CP. We're going to lose Oates. We're probably going to lose Jalen. I don't know. We'll see. Um, David McCormick could come back and have just an all-time curtain call type season where he's, I would hope, just loved all year. The final guy announced in the starting lineup. He's a national champion. He's the probably a preseason first-team All-American, preseason Big 12 player of the year. Like, we've been saying all year, maybe Oates or maybe CB comes back and is the guy. But why not Dave? Why can't Dave? And I maybe Dave looks at it as I'm going out on top. I don't want to deal with not winning as much next year. And I get that. But I'm just saying, old big Dave McCormick can come back and have an all-time just fun, <laughs> stress-free, <laughs> legendary season. And I don't know. What do you think, AB? Do you – should well, we hope for that? <clears throat> Before I get started on responding to that, I don't want to expose anybody in this little group here. But someone up to my top left asked about a month and a half ago, what if Dave just came back next year and someone else to my top right said, do we even want that? That's crazy. 
it, but it's just hey. like like you said, everything can change in like three weeks. So I didn't, um, want, him. I didn't want him back. I don't yeah, think I think I'll we admit. were all yeah, no, I think all of us were in unison on that. Like, yeah, what's the point? Like he hasn't really changed much over four years. And it's just like crazy we knew to he was that. good. Right. Like when was like, he was do we, we want to put up do we want to put up with the roller coaster? Right. Because like, yeah. it's never been a consistent thing. It's like we've seen him play like he played on Monday night or Saturday night before. But it was he would play like that, and then the next game he'd go two of eleven, and he'd shoot like four shots from the foul line, and just his goofy little jumper, and he'd have three turnovers because he tried to dribble too much, and yep. that would be his next three games. So like just to see him put it together for three weeks in a row is phenomenal. But yeah, absolutely, yeah. come back. The only little caviar with that is like what's going to happen. I, I don't want to get into this at all. But are like, is he just going to come back for a regular season? Again, we don't have to talk yeah. details about that because I don't want to make this episode sad in any way, shape, or form. But hey, I, I don't think care. That, <laughs> we that, that's the that. thing. <laughs> Winning a nat is going to soften that blow quite a bit in CAA, you assholes. Yeah. But yeah. like, uh, that's just kind of my mindset with all these guys. Like, why would Jalen come back? Why would CB come back to, you know, win a regular season title and go 14 and four in yeah. conference and then number six in the AP poll just to like end like that? <laughs> Like, I, I yeah. just, I don't know. Like, I just think they're going to go out on top, and next year it might, you know, not be as fun as other years. But, yeah, know, I probably be easier to, easier to swallow. I personally just don't even know really what would benefit him coming back. I mean, I don't see how he would turn into an NBA player. Um, I feel like his stock um, is as high as can be, and he would just be getting another year older. So, I personally think he just wants to start his professional career, and I think he can be – why can't he be a double-double guy overseas for a long time? Um, no. so I don't know, like, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't know what him coming back would really do for him. Um, here's my thing. I don't think he would ever get drafted, but he's like now with NIL coming into play, he could really ride the being I like the, that. I mean, he's on cover of sports illustrated. He's was a star in a final four. I mean, you, we've heard it from Sharon. When you win a title in this town, you are just loved, taken care of. Everyone loves you forever. Like oh, you don't have smart. to ask for, yeah. Like you, you live off those benefits. I don't, I mean, it's just crazy that Dave could now that NIL is a, a thing, Dave could come back, sign a couple NIL deals, be very comfortably financially. And I'm not saying it would, you wouldn't come back necessarily improve your stock. I'm just saying you come back to just have a really fun awesome carefree like ab said there won't be much expectations you're still kind of living off the honeymoon of winning a national title like i don't know and i don't want to turn this into we'll do a postseason next year roster type episode but like it's just kind of crazy to think that dave is now in a position where people like would love 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 to see him come back and he would be <clears throat> the fan favorite from day one His because he's so lovable yeah, and like his reputation's so high now too. So like maybe just leaving, like you said, on top would be like, what if he? I mean, we'll still always have the title and have the clutch shots, but what if he came back and kind of just stunk it up? Yeah, and kind of was, left with I, a little a little bad taste. But now you leave your national title. Like picture Dave coming back to the Fieldhouse in a couple of years to watch a game. They show him on the big screen. He's getting a standing ovation. Like he yeah. made he made some of the biggest shots in KU history. Some of the biggest hooks in KU history. Like. He can go out on top, so I don't know. I mean, it would be awesome yeah. because we're gonna have, we're probably gonna have a freshman big. Probably, I don't know if Uday will start, but maybe Clements. But we're gonna be young down low, so I mean, yep. obviously, no one would hate it. Yep, I uh, <clears throat> yeah. Next year's team is gonna be young and fun. It'll be a lot like '09, I think. Um, which, if Bill's coaching them and not suspended or whatever, he'll get them going and it'll be a full, find a way to make it a fun year. But yeah, I don't yeah. want to get too much into next year. I want to just live up this moment. Um, do we have anything else from the game we want to talk about? Cause I just want to talk yeah. about, okay, bring up what you want. I wasn't wrapping up the episode. I was just going to talk about like oh, the first I game. I want to go for another hour. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not doing that. BJ kill us, but what, uh, I want to talk about you, the I want to talk about the shots Remy hit because, I mean, yeah. just unbelievable. Like, first off, the lefty finish he had over Baycott was insane. And then the three he hit from the wing to take the lead, or I think it was tied, but it was like Dave got in the post, passed it out to CB. 
CB got it at like half court paint. It gave it to Remy step back three. I didn't even know it was a three. I was like in that corner. I couldn't even see. I thought it was a mid range jumper. Um, but that shot, he hit two from the corner. Um, just bit, he get, he doesn't give a shit. Like he loves the moment, dude. Just give him the ball and get out of the way. And those three threes he hit from that right side of the court were just unbelievably big and, I mean, I don't How, uh, like so so many. We we should put like a montage of him in the tournament. Honestly, like so many big time shots he hit, and that three from the right wing is just a, that's a legendary shot, man. That three from the right wing that put us ahead. The thing that I love the most about it is that we spent, you know, like I've said, so many things. You said it earlier. We're all <laughs> we're not idiots. We we've seen this team a lot, and like the takes all year where you got to get Remy in, you got to get Remy in. And we were wrong at that point because he wasn't mm -hmm. healthy. He wasn't good, but we all kind of knew, man, what's this team going to do when they need a bucket late? What's this team going to do when they need a shot or they just are on a drought and need offense. And like Remy saved us time and time again in the tournament. But the thing I was most impressed with, with Bill self on, on Monday is Dewan Harris was fantastic the second half. Played great defense. They set it after. He led the comeback. He got us going. But Bill stuck with Remy late in the game. And that ultimately, you could argue, that decision won us that game. So, like, A.B., were you shocked to see Bill, his guy, Dewan, his didn't even really hide it, his favorite player on this team, um, to see Bill say, whatever, I'm handing the keys to this guy that's been – wildly inconsistent kind of a loose cannon i don't even know how much i fully trust him he lets him take over and be the guy at times late in a national title game it was bizarre to watch i think i even said in your basement a few times like why is dewan not in the game just because he'd been so good and then remy just started hitting those shots shot after shot play after play he had a block on defense too i can't remember who Ooh. shot it for carolina but Can't it was late in the it. shot clock yeah and he just came down, blocked it out of bounds, into that possession pretty much because they couldn't do much after. Um, I mean, he was just that all over the place. Sneaky, that was a sneaky – that was in the final – that was when we were up one, right? And it was Love after drove, Dave's Remy first little – Yeah, He would have had a and wide it open like a, It, it seemed kind of at the layer. time like a, oh, yeah, good defensive play, but it was still like, oh, we still got to get a stop. But then we did, and it all of a sudden I was re-watching, and I was like, whoa, that was a huge yeah. defensive play. And that's the thing, because if he gets cooked there, Caleb Love scores, we lose the game. Then you're saying, we're sitting on this podcast saying, man, Remy was great, but why is DeWan not in the game in that final possession? So to see Remy do it on defense as well was awesome. And, like, I just – I love that Bill trusted him. There was one – so you guys have talked about it 100 times already, but that step back three hit. Um, and I don't know if anyone's tweeted <laughs> so about this, but – but Cole mentioned it in our little group text earlier. It just very much reminded me and reminded him first, obviously I want to credit him for this take entering my brain, but it reminded me of that Kyrie shot against the Warriors back in, was it 2016 when Brian they came back hard. from 3-1? Yeah. To win LeBron another ring. Um, it just, like from the same spot, put them up yep. three late in the game. Just, I mean, it was awesome. It was, and I don't, I mean, it's been talked about, but I think people are what, like paying attention more to the Dave shot and uh, Dave yeah. late. But yeah, Remy was awesome down the road. And I, it's just, it's a genius move by the genius Bill Self that he just trusted, trusted his gut, trusted his playmakers and all the stuff that happened this year with Remy and him, whether it's true or false, it ends up just not mattering because he rode him until the end. And oh, I could argue it won the title. Um, yeah, the Remy, the Remy story is one of the best KU storylines ever. Like we will it talk is. about him for so long. Bill, Bill said it. He averaged three points in league play and three points, which is so crazy. Yeah. Big 12 preseason player of the year. But Bill told the media, he said, Remy would look at me at practice all the time. And he said, you wait till March, wait till March. And Bill would be like, you could, I guarantee you, Bill would just be like, shut up. Like, I bet Bill would get pissed at him. <laughs> just the way he was playing. And he was like, wait till I'm healthy. Wait till March. And that that's just crazy yeah. to me. Like that gives me goosebumps almost. This dude says, wait till March, wait till the tournament. And this dude goes nuts against Creighton. He goes, he, he really good against Providence. And then, I mean, you don't win the national yeah. title game without him either. Like Dave was amazing, but Remy hit the big time threes, man. And he was really yeah. good defensively. Like an AB, I was, I forgot to bring that up. I'm so glad you brought that play up because no one's talking about it. 
that block on Caleb Love, there were six on the shot clock and lefty wide open layup. We had no one under the rim. And that block, that's just such a super underrated play. And every, I mean, every inch in a game like that is just massive. And no one talks about that play, but it was so big. Just so many little things this team <clears throat> did different from the way they were, even in January and stuff like that, to see them making big defensive play. Remy making defensive plays. Uh Dave coming up clutch, like just crazy when you look back on the roller coaster that was the season at times. And it sounds crazy to say a team that goes, what we go 34 and six was a roller coaster, but it, it at times <laughs> was because we're a stupid, spoiled fan base. But mm-hmm. I said this before the final four game, and like I think I'm very confident in saying it. Coach K is gone. And I think Bill Self, I I said it, like, I'll take all arguments. You can throw them my way, and we can argue, but I'm going to be right. Bill Self is the best coach in college basketball. Like, I don't know what the argument is against it at this point. I heard, <laughs> you know, I, I saw people still saying, well, Jay Wright is two in the last six, and Calipari still has more Final Fours, which that one might have been more of a joke. But the people I was seeing say these things, I think they said Jay Wright, Calipari, uh... I don't like. I really think it's Jay Wright. I'm sure there's some jackass Bill. saying Izzo still, but I mean, like, I mean, you yeah. look at Bill now. He's tied for the most rings active, so like yeah. he's got at least an upper hand, if not tied for an upper hand on everybody. <laughs> and no one is sniffing his regular season success, except maybe Mark oh. Few number. I mean, I don't have Mark Few's numbers in front of me, but he hasn't won a title. No that one's gonna argue a, Mark Few is the best coach ever. Titles. Yeah, so like that. But that's my point. It's like. You could argue Bill's on top of both postseason success and regular season success, and yeah. whoever you're going to argue against them is a step below in one of those two categories. So it's like, yeah. I, maybe I mean, obviously we're all biased, we're diehard KU fans, but honestly, like, Dude, what could someone argue to, me, to say that Bill's better or someone's better? The than thing Bill? that puts it over the, the thing that puts it over the top is like, yeah, you can sit, compare Final Fours and stuff like that, but the regular seasons the Big 12 titles, the fact that he has not had a team lower than a freaking four seed ever Crazy. at Kansas. Crazy. It's insane what this dude has done, and I've said that for a while. Like His regular season success <clears throat> goes unnoticed, or it didn't go unnoticed, but it like wasn't viewed as – I think it will be more viewed in the future as being incredible than it is now because – we see him. We've seen him lose in March. He got kind of the tag of choking in March. Well, that's done. Like he's no longer a choker in March. His team just won the freaking Natty, his second one in 15, 14 years. Yeah. So, yeah, I really, I don't know. B turn. Are are you going to be living and dying with that take like I am? Oh, absolutely. We're the biggest. I feel like we're the biggest Bill Self truth truthers in the world. And how good, how good does two and fourteen sound? Like two titles in fourteen years. That just sounds great. And it's so hard yeah. to do. Izzo hasn't done it since two thousand. Shit, the Big Ten as a conference hasn't won one since two thousand. And Bill has February, February Izzo. And Bill has <laughs> Bill has two like that one. That's why I mean. You guys, you guys said it was a dark place at halftime, but that's why I'm sick to my stomach at halftime, man. It's like you get all the yeah. way to the title game and you're getting blown out and you look terrible and the guys look timid and tight. And so you get there, you're down 15. It's like you're, I'm just sitting there walking around the concourse like, how, when are we going to win another one? And wh- when can you even get back? Like how hard is it to get back? And the fact it took that us they 10 came, years to get yeah, there. Yeah, and they, the fact that they came back in that fashion and – just Bill getting that second ring, like that takes so much off of him. I know I don't think he felt pressure, but going in, it's crazy how the guys felt going into New Orleans. Like Bill just had this different, get like a little different pep in his step. Like he was just, he was ready to yeah. get over that hump and win that title. And he was, that's all he was. And I he mean, was even, he was yeah. talking about it, which was a little different for him to just come out and say like flat out, we need more titles. Like we, our program needs more titles. And that's pretty, that's not how he normally is. I feel like he kind of downplays that stuff, but I love that. He just was like, yeah, point blank. We, we need, I, I've had too many good teams. That only have one title. And you so. can't, you can't argue against him being the best college coach um, in college basketball right now. Like there's no argument really because yeah, Jay Wright has the same amount, but you look at resume, conference titles, conference tournament titles, seating, never missing the tournament, getting to the elite eight half the time you've been here and somehow being labeled a choker. Like he's been to the elite eight half the time 
So he's won three games yeah. or more in the tournament half the time he's been here. Like no, no one's resume. Yeah, Jay Wright has the titles, but Jay Wright used to be the guy that was labeled as a choker, I feel like, and then he won two and three years. So it's like yeah. maybe Bill can go on. Our, it makes me want more, obviously, but – we could go a few years without winning one now. It's like there would have been a lot of pressure if they ended up losing that game Monday night. Do you guys think he gets yeah. another one just while we're on that subject? I mean, because like we talked about before the tournament or before the Final Four, like, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with the investigation. So if that sets us back a little bit and he's already he's going to be 60 next year, we don't think he's going to be a guy that coaches till he's 75 years old. So, like, how many chances does he have left when you consider all those things? But at the same time, it's like people – I mean, this story has been talked about by everybody. He just always puts himself in the position to get to one and win one, and sometimes you're just going to break through and get it. you got to assume it's going to kind of return to that at least to a degree once all this FBI stuff's over with. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I want to hear if you guys had any takes on that. It's would... hard to go ahead, Ray. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say it's hard to say, like, oh yeah, he's getting a third, even though I'm riding pretty high right now. And you you see it happen, and now all of a sudden you're like, why can't we win five? Like it's <laughs> it's uh but I do think I the way I could see it happening is yeah, like I could see us having maybe a rough three to four, five year stretch, but then you get through that not rough, I'm just saying maybe not tired of contenders. Yeah, yeah. But then you get through that, and now Bill, Bill Selfs, all of a sudden, he's probably man- mastered the transfer portal. He's uh, he's probably looking at his career like, okay, I got five, set, six more years left. And now it's like, okay, let's go get one more. And I think that'll be the thing. If we're still a podcast, I hope we are, we'll be saying like, man, Bill's 65, 66, maybe got four years left. He just needs one more. Go out on top. And I would love. Nothing more. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I would love if Bill somehow got one more and just retired like, right then. I don't want him to have a Roy Williams type. You know, Roy retired kind of because Roy's teams were starting to suck his final two years. And Coach K did the most banana land retirement tour of all time. Like there would be nothing cooler to me than than Roy having or than Bill having just an all time great season winning <laughs> Maddie and just being like, peace, I'm out. So I'm not ruling it out, but I'm I'm at the point where I don't – I'm content with Bill Self's legacy, his his career at Kansas, his – just – there will never be a bad thing said about Bill Self forever now, and he needs to have something named after him. Um, we'll see if that happens. Tough. He's got Naismith and Fog Allen to compete with, so that's <laughs> obviously tough. But I don't know. B-Turn, what do you think? Yeah, I was – I mean, I was thinking about this earlier, just looking up his age and seeing how – I was kind of looking how old Coach K is and how long Bill might coach. It's like he said last off season, he's pretty rejuvenated. I have no idea, like, how long he wants to coach. Um, but if he gave us 10 more years, I mean, it would be – obviously, it would be so nice to get another one. But I was going to ask you guys before the pod, like, what are you guys, like, satisfied with Bill Self's – you kind of just said it, but are you guys satisfied with his career, like winning two natties? I know Roy never even won one here. Yeah, so. how could you not be? He's the only coach in yeah. the school's history to win two. Mm-hmm. He's one of 16 coaches ever to win two or more. Like, I think it would sound very spoiled of us to say we weren't satisfied with Bill Self's, at least his first, what, 18, 19 years here? I can't remember off the top of my yeah. head. But. Do you know Jay Wright's yeah. older? Did you know he's younger than Jay Wright, Bill Self? Yeah. Jay Wright's Dude. way better looking, though. Bill did all the end. Jay Wright's starting to slip. People forget that. Well, um, the quarter zip, the quarter zips thing. have, the quarter zips have really hurt Jay Wright. Yeah, because he was a big, beautiful suit guy. But dude, yeah, that's the thing. Bill compared to like we're putting him in the same like oh yeah Roy Coach K legends. Bill's fifty nine, and I'm doing quick math here. But Roy Williams, I believe, is seventy one years old. He won his second title in two thousand nine. So that was 13 years ago. So that's 58, 59. So like you think about that, Roy Williams winning his second title around this same time and coached had really good teams um, for the next eight to nine years until we saw those final two years start to slip. So Bill having the resume he has before age 60 is absolutely absurd because he, if you, he retired, he's already a hall of famer. If he retired now, you'd look back on his numbers, his stats, everything, and just be like, man, what a legend. And he's really, 
I mean, I think could coach another 10 years. So yeah, and it might, it I'm might, very satisfied. It might depend what he does over the next 10 years. Like what if he wins another title in five years and just hangs it up or he goes 10 years without one and tries to ride it out for a few more years. So yeah. I don't know. Did, that you, see Nor- did you see a uh, Norlanders article about how yeah. if there was ever a time he was just going to leave. It, it could be right now, which I don't think's the case, but it, it did get me thinking a little bit like, wow. <laughs> Because yeah, he's going to be a hot name. Like, will he be a hot name, like, NBA-wise right now? Because I feel like the college coach that wins the title always gets some name, some some buzz. But it's the same that, buzz that he's – I can't believe yeah. you're even saying this because when I tweeted that out four years ago, you almost shot me in the face. When it said the Bulls when? were very interested in Bill Self. <laughs> and I tweeted that out. Well, and you... I think that ship sailed, but I just think that – after winning a natty, you can that buzz starts to generate a little bit. There's a certain coach about ten or eleven hours south of us that might be out soon, and I heard Bill has a good friend in that front office. We want to respark that rumor. Spurs Wait. Popovich. We're gonna hire. Oh, <laughs> not uh, yeah. We're gonna hire Pop. Jesus, Ryan. <laughs> No. My brain just short circuited. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, all right, we're not Atlanta doing Bill Hawks. South NBA NBA talk. I'm sorry, but okay. Let's uh, let's let's start to wrap this up a little bit. I wanted to one B turn. We got to recap your night. You freaking <laughs> psychopath. The amount of people that text me, and I just had to tweet it. I just tweeted. Look, guys, I don't know how he pulled this off. Yeah, I didn't people even text me. What is what does B turn do for a living? How does Beecher do this? The fact that you sat with Paul Pierce, Devon Dotson, uh, who just named the legends. It was a bunch of legends. It's you. No offense, but you are not like the others. I'm almost as good as basketball at basketball as those guys. Um, High school, baby. Dude, so my goofy white ass (laughs) is sitting in the middle of freaking Wayne Simeon. Nick Collison, Drew Gooden, Brandon Rush, Mario Chalmers, um, Pierce. Russell Robinson, Paul Pierce, Jeff Boshi, my childhood coach right next to me. Like these dudes I watched as a kid, like KU legends. And it was like just to see how passionate and like – how happy and how into it, like every possession they were, especially getting analysis. Like Billy Thomas is right behind me too. He's one of my favorite humans in the world. I don't know him like crazy well, but friend of the friend of the pod. Yeah, just the nicest guy. Um, and just hearing his, he's a coach. Hearing all these different analysis from freaking Drew Gooden and Pierce, and like like those those two are cool as hell. Like they were sitting there having convos with me, just talking basketball. Like just hearing analysis from the legends and how into it they were, like living and dying by possessions. Like I post the video of Brandon Rush, like that emotion from him was so cool to me. Like how into it he was. He was obviously on the last national title team, and just to see their fit, like the video I posted of all of them when we won it. Like just to see how happy they were and relieved and dapping up bill down by the bench after the game they're all just so happy for bill and that was dude i needed that night so bad like that was such that was so cool for me obviously i'm a diehard fan and i looked up to these guys and their ku legends like that was just the cool like i can't think of a better experience for myself like that has to be the best night of my life like it's just sports and stuff but that was the coolest thing ever dude it is crazy. I mean, that's just a story. <laughs> what you, you guys do? Forever. It's a story that if there wasn't documentate, like if there wasn't video of it, I'd be like, you're lying. Like <laughs> you're lying. Mm-hmm. They would have, they would have simply picked you up by your collar and threw you out the door because it's like, who is this scrawny, no <laughs> offense, white guy with all these <laughs> NBA, some NBA legends, some college hoops legends. Like, what are we doing? It was so funny. I'm getting texts, you- I'm getting tweets. It's just like I'm like guys. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm addressing it now. I don't know how this guy pulls it off, but he does. And uh, just what did hilarious. you guys do? Like, like did you guys find out from like my tweets and snaps, or was it when you saw me on TV? Some I don't. Did I, you guys see me? I found out from Ryan. Did Ryan like announced it to the basement. Like, a, like what? Twenty minutes before the game started. I literally you... said. I literally was like breaking news. B turn is watching this game. With Paul Pierce, Drew Gooden, <laughs> and just named all the names, and everyone just like looked at me like, "What? 
what do you mean? I'm like, look, show them the video. Next thing you know, AB's like, Turner, 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 as you're on the TV <laughs> next to freaking Paul Pierce. Like, the reason you were on TV is because the, the cameras were on Paul Pierce. Like, no, was, they're on Brady. And you, and you know it popped in my head once I somehow get sat next to Paul Pierce. Like, I went with Devon and his brother, and the seats were just – the players were sitting everywhere. Like, it's just – like, Pierce was basically in the aisle just standing there. And somehow – my ass gets seated next to maybe the biggest KU or maybe one of the, at least one of the biggest KU names ever. Like he was all on social media, all on TV, whatever. So once I'm sitting next to the truth, like obviously me loving the clout, I immediately just start thinking about how I'm going to be on TV and a few things like that. But what are the odds I get seated next to Paul Pierce? I just, I like to think that CBS producers or TBS producers were like, Hey, there's the producer. There's the uh, the podcast host, B. Turn. Let's uh, let's get him on TV right now. But uh, just just legendary stuff, dude. And no way. I mean, I'll never be able to explain to people how you pull it all off, but you do it. Um, it works. All right. Enough. Enough. I of, have, uh, I'm not letting you wrap up before I say two things. I'm not wrapping up yet. I just was done. Got crazy B. Turn for a little bit. Oh yeah, what a flex. Keep it going. <laughs> Uh, first off, just want to mention a little numbers that I looked up. This is going way back to like the comeback in the first half, but I don't think as a pod, we've tweeted anything more than the 40 to 12 Brandon rush picture. North <laughs> Carolina photo on Twitter. Yeah, North Carolina quietly went on a 40 to 18 run in that first half after we went up seven Oh, and then it was 40 wow. to 25 at halftime. Like, isn't that crazy to think yeah. about? Like, that's like the most memorable moment of a final four game for us is going up 40 to 12 against Roy. And Carolina basically did it to us, and we still won the game. That's one. Yeah, I actually have three points. Two, we get out rebounded by twenty. How do we win a game? We're out rebounded by twenty. That's just insane. That's all I got on that. Nice. And the number three, I'd be remiss to say it has nothing to do with KU, but I've dealt with Ryan's ass for too long to not bring up the Los Angeles Lakers are eliminated <laughs> from playoff contention. So that's all I got. Are you worried about wherever you want to go with Hawks, this. Yeah, Hawks are Hawks are national champs. Hawks are uh, cooking. Wayne, uh, I'm going to try and do some quick math real quick. Not math, but relive some history. I was thinking about this last night. In North Carolina, okay, I'm just going to lay this all out. North Carolina won the title, or they lost to us in 08 in the tournament. They won the title in 09. They didn't make the tournament in 10. They, I don't know what they did in 11, but they lost to us in 12. They lost to us in 13. And now they've lost to us in... Uh, 2022 so we've beaten them four and then they've had two nit seasons plus a canceled tournament plus they won two natties in that stretch so that's five seasons four out of the last what what i'm trying to get at is we've this ended is north Zach carolina's Galifianakis gif with all the math going i have <laughs> no, no idea where help we're going me, with this. help me we've ended north carolina's season with a loss four out of their last what 10 times they've lost in the tournament do you see what i'm saying like yeah, they no, either won you. the natty i don't know i just i well, was they didn't even the tournament like, last year did they i don't think they, they were made. a nine seed they were a nine seed and got oh i'm thinking i'm seed. thinking of duke and kentucky i'm sorry those are the two yeah. blue bloods that went like four <laughs> and 22 combined sorry i, I honestly paired with that take <laughs> i know i had a convo with someone like a month ago i don't even know who it was but they were like which they asked me like which one of the blue bloods i hate and like UNC got brought up, and I was like, "Dude, I have literally zero reason to hate them. It's crazy. I love them. We, just, we have, yeah, we just I love dominate them. them, and <laughs> we have so many ties with them too. It's crazy. Like obviously Roy, Dean Smith, um, and we don't. Bill hasn't lost to them since they no, no. since he got here. It's crazy, and we beat him in national semis and the title game. Like it's yep. so and insane. The they, have to, they have to hate us so much." Yeah. I don't but think yeah, they do. No, weirdly, I don't so, think they do. Yeah. yeah. Did you listen to Titus and Tate, either of you? No. A little bit. Not, okay, not so a Tate's a um, big UNC fan, like diehard. And they kind of – it was really cool. I suggest, you know, any KU fan looking for more Natty title recap to go listen to that because there was like a 15-minute stretch where they were just like loving up on KU and how like they're the most likable blue blood and how wow. it's like hard to hate KU compared to like Duke and Kentucky and these schools – and but Tate was saying this like KU and UNC just have so many ties that it's like even like with the recent history against each other he has like no reason to hate us and he just like like if he would have rather lost us than lose to Duke in the final four or lose to Kentucky and like the you know 
that Elite yep. Eight game they played a couple years ago. So I don't know if that's just him and being like a level-headed basketball like fanatic like he is, but it's like they just share so much history with each other. And like we gave them Dean Smith and then we shared Roy for so long. And it's just like, I just think it's like, yeah. a, it's almost like a brother in a way. Like, yeah, we're going to hate each other yeah. at times, but you know, yeah. at the end no, of the day, it's, we're, it's we're awesome. in the same boat. So, yeah. Uh, okay. This is what I wanted to bring up a while ago, but <laughs> I remember, I remember thinking, you know, we won the title in 08 what were Twitter wasn't really around like videos weren't big yet. You had YouTube, but it was like, and I remember all these years I see teams celebrating on Twitter and fan bases and it's just so fun. And I remember thinking we have to get a natty in this new world of just unlimited video access. And you get players going on Instagram live and you got incredible edits being done by the Kansas program and even other just Twitter accounts that make awesome, like, I can't describe to you how incredible it was Monday night to just lay in. I, I was in a freaking hotel bed because I got three hours of sleep before a all day meeting at work. Um, but just to sit there and look at all the content and the love and the videos and the celebrations and everything that this team was a part of after that night was like just so enjoyable. Like I know mass street was really fun, but I just loved being, I could not put my phone down because of how lovable this team was and how much incredible content there was. And I'm just so happy we finally yeah. got one because it wasn't like that in 08. It just wasn't. Yeah. I know the Remy, like the Remy Martin content, him on the stage dancing in the locker room dancing, getting to see Bill's. Like you don't get, like you said in 08, you don't really, like you got Bill Self's pregame speech in 08, but you don't get like an up close of him talking to the team and just seeing the guys' reactions. You get, you get to see everything, dude. And it's like, yeah. that's why I know people like, People on the internet will be like, put your phones down, enjoy the moment. But, dude, you get so much cool ass content from cell phones and stuff like that. Like, I think, <laughs> I, I mean, in that moment, I feel like you, it's a must. Like, that's stuff you get to live with forever. And we get those videos, like, we get a, I don't know, we get to enjoy it so much more now just because of social media. Like, there's so many things we can go look at, like Instagram, Twitter, whatever, KU Hoops on Twitter, Instagram, like, we have so much access to just soak this shit up and enjoy it forever. It's so cool, man. Yeah. Like you said, with the whole, like the cell phone thing, like one of my happiest moments of the night is my girlfriend got all the footage of us celebrating. Like I mean, I've so watched, happy. I've watched that video so many times. We're not failing. 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 We're, not failing. We're, not failing. <laughs> We're all like cussing and jumping. And I think I might be concussed. I hit my head on your ceiling 22 times. But it's like yeah. those – and like we, we said, I don't know if we said it on the pod, but we definitely had talked about it with each other. Like watching those games and going into it, whether you win or lose, like you're going to remember that for the rest of your life. And yeah. especially now that they won, like I remember exactly what I was doing in 08, and I'll remember exactly where I was and what I was doing and who I was with in 22. And all the videos and everything that go along with it are great. And it's just, you know, Braden, like you said, it's just a way to remember everything more vividly compared to just relying on your brain because who knows what's going to go on up there the rest of your life you could all you're always going to have that video you're always going to have those pictures and you know, it's it's phenomenal Dude. national championships are just like i remember even kind of all day on monday i was kind of sitting there thinking like you know how when you almost like try and talk yourself out of wanting something so you're like okay it, It'll be how good could the feeling be if we win it? Like, what? I'll be fine. My, I always say my life will not be impacted by this moment. I think I was saying that to you. I, I you almost like, slapped yes, you will. in the face. Yes, I almost it will. slapped you in the face when you said that 20 <laughs> minutes to tip off. But that's just me trying to get myself less yeah. nervous. But like, I was sitting there thinking, like, I wonder how good the feeling will be because we were eight. I was eighth grade. You guys were seventh grade the last time. So that was kind of like you're still a kid and that type of feeling was incredible. Mm -hmm. But it was just so fun to be there with, with you guys. And I don't know. I, it was as good as I like dreamed of it being like wanting all year to see another natty, see Bill get a natty, like national championships, the content, the celebrations, the, the moments as you watch the whole tournament are just so fun. I'm addicted to them. I need more, but we may never get one. And that's why you have to just live it up and live, love what we just saw because you never know when you turn into Indiana, Indiana basketball and wait 
who knows how long they'll wait. Yeah, they're they're so hard to come by that you just I mean, you never know when the next one's gonna be. It could be freaking 30, 40 years. We went from fifty two to eighty eight, from eighty eight to oh eight, and then I mean we got one from oh eight to twenty two, but it's like they're so damn hard to come by and the fact that we even won the game is insane to me and out rebounded by twenty. I think they had twenty second half or second chance points at halftime, which is like the amount of points we had as a team at half almost and yeah, our rebound, they had like 30, 25 offensive rebounds, and I don't know, just I, the fact that we won is still insane to me, and it's just the winning a natty is the best feeling ever. Chiefs have won a Super Bowl, but winning the natty is just an it's all-time so hard. feeling. Aren't sports it's the so best? Hard. I know, like, for this is more Brighton and I specific, but Ryan, you can kind of blend in a little bit because you're not as big of a fan, but you do care. But in the last seven or eight years – We've seen the Royals go to a World Series and then go to another one and win it. We've seen the Chiefs go to a Super Bowl and win it and then go to another Super Bowl. We've seen KU go to two championships and win one. Like People like to make fun of the oh, Yankees, Lakers, Cowboys fans that are just bandwagon, cherry pick. It's hard to argue that three championships in the last seven years for some of our favorite teams is just yeah. insanely spoiled. And I don't yep. think that we like soak that in enough as a whole uh, with how lucky we are with sports locally and just how much we care about them. I know we're crazy about it because we have zero control over it, but um, <laughs> it's a good time to be alive to be Kansas City and is. KU fan. A Kansas City Jayhawk fan, which, by the Can't. way, I wanted to throw this out here. People are mad about that, but the only thing it did for me is confirm to the Big Ten – that Lawrence is a suburb of Kansas City. So everyone that <laughs> argues about that, down. Yeah, send us to the Big Ten. We'll see you there. 2027 Big Ten West football champs. And how many yeah. how many times did we say throughout the duration since we started this pod in 2019 that how cool would it be to record an episode talking about Kansas winning a national title? And we get I we know. got to do it tonight. That's so cool to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do more. Like we're not done. That's what I wanted to kind of wrap this show up with. Um, we're gonna we're gonna put out some more podcasts. Just we're not done recapping. I mean, we may be done recapping the game, but there's still so much to come from a national title. We have a parade on Sunday. Uh, we didn't even get into all the like we saw all these incredible videos. We have I don't know, like just so many great moments from this season, from this March. Like we'll talk about that. We'll be back. Let's wrap it up because we've gone quite a while. Um, do you guys have anything else before we uh, finish up the old national title pod that we just got to do a pod we never thought we'd get to do? National champs. Yeah. I'm just so, happy to be it. here, boys. Love you guys. Let's go. <laughs> Love you too, yep. brother. That's it. We'll be back again soon. Talk more national titles. Rock Chalk or national champs.